Yeah, hello and welcome to Kimber Bushcraft, to, to Kimber Camp. Uh, yeah, it's a nice weather out here. A little bit cloud, but uh, warm and cozy out here. Yeah, and I'm actually making two videos out here today. One, uh, the first one that will come in the beginning of the weekend, and the second one that will become that will come uh, Sunday. And yeah, the first one is my new series. Did you know? And uh, this time I'll tell you about something new discoveries about the rune stones, a new technology that has revealed some secrets in the rune stones. Very excited to tell you about that. And uh, the second video will be about my uh, Viking axes and knives. I brought all my uh, Viking axes and my knives out here to Kimbercam and I would like to present them for you and tell you the stories about these axes. But uh, this will be in the next video on Sunday. Yeah, as you can see here, Cornelius has been. I cut his hair. Yeah, he's so cute now. I like him when he's uh, short-haired, but uh, like me. Uh, and uh, yeah, he likes it too. Uh, when I cut his hair, he feels a little bit more free. I can see that uh, when I'm going with him in the in the forest. So, yeah. Hope going to be a nice day out here today. Uh, I'm not going to cook some food. Uh, uh, in the second video, I'll make something special, uh, some chaga coffee. I made that before, but uh, those of you who haven't seen that yet, I'll make it for you. So yeah. But now I'll just uh, sit in by the fire and uh, begin talking about uh, this subject that I think is very interesting. Yeah, before I start talking about this, I'll try to make it uh, short and simple. It's a very complex uh, theory and uh, there's a lot of elements in this that I won't uh, bring into my uh, story about these uh, rune stones and the technology. I'll try to make it a little bit simple and, uh, and not too long. Yeah, and welcome to my series, Did You Know? And uh, this time it's about new technology that can reveal uh, some secrets uh, about the rune stones. Yeah. And uh, I'll talk about the uh, Yelling rune stones. They are located in Yelling in the southern part of Denmark. And, and the big rune stone that is uh, in Yelling is the most famous rune stone in Denmark and probably maybe uh, one of the most famous rune stones in, in the whole world. We call it uh, Denmark's uh, birth certificate. Uh, but this is the first rune stone that was made in uh, 950 by uh, Gorm the Old. And uh, this is the inscription of that. King Gorm made this monument in memory of his wife Tyra, uh, Denmark's adornment. An adornment uh, will mean something like pride or protection. Yeah, very interesting. As you can see, he mentioned Tyra, his wife. And uh, this is the other rune stone uh, that was made by uh, Harold Bluetooth. 
and the inscription in that is this one. King Harold ordered these combles, and that means uh, uh, inscriptions, made in memory of Gorm, his father, and his memory of Tura, his mother, that Harald, who won the himself, all of Denmark, Norway, and made the Danes Christian. So as you can see in the, these two rune stones, the, uh, they mention both uh, Tura, and Tura was of course Gorm's uh, wife and uh, her Bluetooth mother. And uh, yeah, it was a very strong woman, and uh, as uh, Gorm said, uh, he, she was a very proud woman that uh, had a lot of meaning for Denmark, both political and uh, personal. Uh, they say that she was uh, uh, a part of the construction of the Dannevirke in the southern part of Denmark, but other people say it's not true because the, re the reinforcement of Dannevirke was uh, later in the uh, uh, Viking period during uh, Harald Bluetooth. In another runestone in Leiborg, uh, Tyra's name is also mentioned, and the archaeologist or the scientist uh, didn't know for certain if it was the same name or the same lady that was referring to in that runestone. So now new technology has uh, revealed a secret in these runestone and I'll talk about that now. Yeah, and it's a 3D scanning of uh, some of the runestones. A scientist has uh, permission to do that on both of the runestones in Yelling and other runestones in Denmark. And uh, through her work uh, new uh, discoveries has been revealed because she can say with certain that uh, the man who made the runestone in Yelling and in Labor is the same man. So the Tura was also be the same lady that is mentioned there. And in Labor stone they, she calls a Drottning, which can mean a queen or just a lady. But she was a very important person for sure. And, uh, and uh, she found out that uh, the man that made these runestones, or she could see a pattern in uh, the way the runestones are made, uh, the way the sizzle ball holds, and the way the uh, hammer was pounding in it, and uh, how he was holding the sizzle. And it becomes like a signature in the runestone, because there's not two uh, runestone maker that make the same pattern. She found out that uh, uh, it's very, uh, it's like a fingerprint. Uh, because of these three d scanning, she could see uh, that the person that made the runestones in uh, Yelling and in Labor is the same person. And uh, the one in Labor has his name on, Ravn Unge, too. Uh, and therefore he, she can say that the runestones in Labor and in Yelling are the same maker. It's very interesting and I, I think uh, it reveals uh, something that uh, we have never seen before in these runestones because we can't see that with the eye. And uh, yeah, as you can see in this picture, the archaeologists actually mean or think that uh, the Vikings uh, painted the runestones. I think they have found traces of paint on the runestones, and they can say that the runestones in the Viking Age was painted. As you can see in this picture, how it probably or perhaps could have looked uh, when it was made in the in the Viking Age. Uh, so another uh, appearance that uh, nowadays, where it's very rough. At that time, daughters of colors and uh, very impressive to look at. And another uh, funny story is that uh, if you see this picture of uh, Jesus Christ, uh, he's actually not hanging on the cross, uh, he's only stretching his arms and he's looking very uh, firm and strong. And uh, some archaeologists say that uh, this image looks very much like other images from that period that, that shows Odin. Uh, so. Uh, some say that uh, uh, to uh, make the Danes more uh, accepting for the Christianity, he made Jesus look uh, strong and firm and, uh, and uh, not weak and uh, suffering on the cross. And perhaps uh, a little bit like Odin, so that the Danes or the pagans would accept Jesus Christ easily. But that's only a theory. I don't know if it's true, but I think it's very interesting. As well. Yeah, and as I mentioned in my intro uh, a couple of videos ago, uh, these uh, videos with uh, my Did You Know series will not be very long. So, uh, uh, nevertheless, I hope you find this interesting. And now it's time for a little dram in my little cup here. And uh, again, thanks to Benjamin from Netherlands they, that uh, give me this. This is nothing for you, Cornelius, no.
Let's go, everyone. Mm. Oh, I also got some beef jerky that Cornelius really like. And me too. Yeah. Mm. One more for you there. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. so good. And first, I was happy because back home I live about uh, 40 kilometers from here. There's uh, very cloudy, and uh, out here it's very uh, sunny. And first thought was, oh, it's nice to be out here when it's sunny, but as you can see, uh, the recordings, the footage is not as good because there's a lot of contrast here. But I think you can see it nevertheless, and I hope you enjoyed it. Yep. Hmm? See if we can get this fire going again. And some beef jerky. Yeah. Mm. Just a little bit more. Yep. And um, don't forget to watch my my next video on Sunday where I present all my axes and uh, Viking knives. I hope you find that interesting too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for watching Kimber Bushcraft and I hope to see you again on Sunday on my next one. Bye bye. Take care.